on visiting my grandmother's place, which is situated right beside the Wang Kra River, one of the two major rivers in Shillong City. I was in confusion to see the plight of the river, which does not match to the stories which my father had narrated to me. He used to describe the river as being pristine, clean, and uncontaminated with greenery all around. I remember being mesmerized by my father's experience of playing and bathing in this river with his childhood friends. Catching fishes and frogs with his friends was his favorite pastime. Today, if you visit Waomkra, the only thing you would catch are plastic waste. It is also hard to believe that a small football field was earlier located near the river. It was an ideal place to spend his evening hours after school and during holidays. I, Napi Sabit George Niyabathao, want to relive the moments which my parents enjoyed during their childhood. I want to play in the clean rivers, run around the clean foothills and the little free roads of Meghalaya. Is this too much to ask for? Would this be possible in my state? Would I be able to make memorable moments with Mother Nature? However, to my dismay, Wa Umkra is not the only water body that has been affected. There are many more water bodies that has been affected by our daily habits. For example, Umyam Lake and the Lukha River. Last month, I visited the Umyam Lake for an air show by the Indian Air Force commemorating 91 years of their service to the country. Although I was awestruck by the aerial display, I couldn't help but notice the lake being so dirty, emitting an unhygienic odor. When you look at the lake from a distance, you can still see the picture's view. However, as you reach at the bank of the lake, we will see accumulation of garbage and realize how polluted the lake is and unfit for aquatic life. So is the situation of the Lukar River, located in the southern part of East Jantia Hills of Meghalaya, where most of Meghalaya rat hole mines are located, has become a victim of the unsustainable large-scale mining of coal and limestone responsible for the pollution that turns the river into its surreal winter hue. I wonder if we still have clean water bodies in our state. While doing my research on this, I found out that one of India's cleanest rivers, which is also an important fishing spot for local fishermen, is located at Dauki village in Meghalaya. The river is known as Wa Ungat or Wa Dauki. Wouldn't it be amazing if every river in Meghalaya can be like Wa Ungat? A video of the Umgad River has been circulating over the internet in which a boat seems to be floating in mid-air due to its clear and pristine water. It seems like a magnificent experience. I'm yet to take a trip to this river with my family. However, I did not stop searching for answers as to why Umgad River is so clean. The reason is that the river which stretches to about 82 kilometers, does not pass through any human settlement. On that note, can we conclude then that no humans equals to no pollution? Sadly, the saying, man is the worst creation of God, rings true to this topic. Major contributor of water pollution is man, Human activities in our state, such as household discharge, agricultural runoff containing pesticides and fertilizers, sewage disposal, and oil spills introduce contaminants into water bodies. Are we ignorant of the outcome of our misdeeds? For further understanding, improper waste disposal 
such as littering from car washing centers, eateries, and factories also contribute to its pollution. The accumulation of microplastics and heavy metals from various sources further degrades water quality. Has greed taken over our conscience? Yes. In the case of the once mighty Waumkra River, land reclamation by some of the landlords around the area had affected the source of water. Thus, reducing the amount of water flow into the river itself. We have become academically intellectual, but are we intelligent enough towards our environment? I want to share an incident with you. On my visit to the cleanest village in Asia, Maulanong, the tourists who were walking in front of us were enjoying their snacks. However, instead of disposing their waste properly, they were throwing the wrappers all around. To my utter surprise, I noticed children from the village picking up the garbage, which I quietly appreciated. We need to realize that even a small act of throwing garbage, like sweet wrappers, chip packets, etc., from our car windows, not only causes land pollution, but water pollution as well. I'm here to remind you that water pollution has severe and far-reaching effects on human health, the economy, and the ecosystem. Contaminated water bodies can harm aquatic life by depleting oxygen levels, leading to fish kills and disrupted food chains. There was a time when people used to indulge themselves in angling activities in our clean and pristine rivers. But now, there are no signs of fishes or any aquatic life in many urban rivers. And if found, they are unfit for human consumption. It also impacts human health as polluted water can carry diseases and toxins causing illness or even death. Drinking water contaminated with pollutants like heavy metals and chemicals poses long-term health risks. And the shocking fact is that recently in a test on water samples in Shillong City, the State Food Testing Laboratory Commissionerate of Food Safety has revealed that water samples of 44 out of 46 localities are unsafe for drinking. This is a major concern. Don't you think we need to wake up? As mentioned earlier, no humans equals to no pollution. But unfortunately, we are living in denial and somehow we have turned a blind eye towards this serious issue. We are relying on the government agencies to do the cleanup. But as the saying goes, charity begins at home. Let me rephrase that to cleanliness begins at home. This is one of the basic learning that has been imparted to each and every one of us right since childhood. It builds character and discipline. However, we are not extending this learning when it comes to our surroundings. We should discard our household solid and liquid waste into the designated location without any compromises. There are several ways by which we can mitigate this issue. But until and unless, if there's a will from our side, no visible changes will occur. We need to understand what are the components that are contributing to this problem. Once we identify them, then we need to inculcate the habit of disposing them to the right disposable bin or waste disposable centers. There is one solution that was implemented by Mr. Tarun Sebastian Nanda, an ecological engineer wherein he designed the Adopt an Island initiative. This system tackles the water pollution and provides sustainable results. Another invention was by Dr. Anjan Mukherjee. He created a device that goes by the name Taral Tech 
disinfection reactor, which eliminates waterborne diseases and renders the water safe for drinking, food preparation, etc. Our government has also tried to implement AI power machines to clean the water surface of Umyam Lake as well. Even last year in March, the government of India launched a project called Sujalam 2.0 campaign. Through this project, the grey water released into the nearby water bodies can be recycled. Over 6 lakh villages will see intense activity on solid and liquid waste management. When I look around and put serious thoughts, I do not think any scientific or AI-based solutions alone can tackle the problem. Because the basic problem, as much as we are in denial, is lack of civic sense. Hence, I think one of the best ways to mitigate this issue is by organizing awareness programs, where we can make those households which are directly contributing to the disposal of waste especially along the Wam Crowd River, to realize about the negative impacts of unscientific disposal of solid and liquid waste directly into the river. We can also make them aware about the various government schemes on making soap pits. Personally, I can also form a team and join hands with the Operation Cleanup team of Shillong. This team of more than 200 people collect tons of waste from Urkalia River, which is the major tributary of Waam Kra. However, no matter how many solutions the government and social experts come up with, if we as individuals do not do our part, the solution will be ineffective. Let us start by proper disposal of waste from our homes, school, workplace, etc. Let us stop throwing garbage out of our cars while traveling. Stop wasting water and encourage water conservation. As Helen Keller once said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. So let us all join hands together to fight this threat and preserve our water and nature for a better tomorrow. I would really like to relive the moments which my parents enjoyed during their childhood because they sound very breathtaking. I'm ready to take the first step. Are you in? Thank you.